like give that i don't see why that's just barbaric like that is barbaric and they stole the joy that she should have had day two after her c-section they they stole it from her Hello, beautiful people. It's Mama Goob. So today I want to take a peek at Kelly Strack's labor and delivery video as it's going to be foreshadowing for sure for our Alex. So I've never watched a video with this person. This is 26 minutes long. I'm not sure how she speaks. If she speaks too low, I'm probably going to speed it up a little as my time is limited today, but you know, let's take a peek and see if this foreshadows what our Alex will go through very soon. Okay, so this is titled Birth Vlog, First Time Mom, 48 Hours of Labor and Delivery and Induction, and I think she got a C-section. It's cut off, but um, that sucks. Yeah, that sucks, but let's see. Hello, you guys. <laughs> Welcome to what I think is going to be the labor vlog. Yeah. Uh, okay. I wonder if she's going to show baby. I hope not. Oh my gosh. It is currently 1236 at night right now. My water broke about, I don't know, what, like an hour ago? An hour or so, yeah. Yeah, so my water broke about an hour ago. Um, and why aren't they on their way to the hospital? And by the way, she looks fantastic for going through labor. Like, like she did her hair and makeup. God bless America. She has lipstick on. <laughs> um, I feel fine, which is what's kind of weird. It's like on the couch, it's like, see that? You're like, you're like, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, cause there's so many people, like my friends that have had kids and my mom and stuff, their water never broke, like until they were like at the hospital and stuff. So like, I was kind of like expecting that it wasn't going to really happen to me. But why isn't she going to the hospital right now? I'd be on my way. It was like literally like how it is in the movies, um, at least for me. So that happened, but I don't have any contractions or anything yet. I feel fine. So I called the doctor, spoke to them a little bit, and they basically said to chill at home for now because I don't really want to go to the hospital right now, especially when I don't have contractions because like, yeah. why sit I cannot believe how things changed. I remember, um, so when we went to our hospital, they talked about boomerang visits, like you go there and then they send you home. But a, but a water breakage was a get into the hospital for free. Wow, have things changed. There for longer than we have to. So we're gonna attempt to get some sleep. <laughs> we'll see how that With your fucking water broke? Uh, yeah, okay. Ooh. Oh, boy. Yeah, because it's like almost Have things changed. They're like, oh, yeah, we'll go to sleep. I'm like, am I really going to get any sleep? But at least I can, like, be in our own bed and, like, relax for a little bit. Yeah. And then they said to head there um, within the next six hours just so they can check and make sure everything's okay. Um, I guess because once your water breaks, even if you're not having contractions, they still want you to go. Yeah. Um, within yeah. Within six hours of it happening. So we're going to get a little bit of sleep. I guess head to the hospital. <laughs> Yeah, see what happens. Oh with my God, with I'm herself, and nervous, so many she's things. getting into her bed, leaking. I I guess maybe she's just trickling. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, okay, okay, good. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel? Who are see? these fucking doctors? <laughs> yes, we're just excited. Once he's out, I'll feel so much better. A little nervous at the moment, but um. Good day. Yeah. Yeah, I think everything's gonna be okay. So we'll keep you guys updated. Good morning, you guys. It is just after 5.15 a.m. We are about to head to the hospital. I still feel okay. I feel crampy, but nothing like that I can't handle or anything like that. So I feel like the contractions didn't really start yet. Um, so yeah, but the doctors just want me to come in because it's been within four to six hours, I guess, from when the water broke to- Yes, your water broke. Go to the hospital. I mean, I'm, uh, phew. oof, I will, I don't like her doctors. Not only that, so that happened to me. I didn't have contractions, really. Um, but I did have, I was actually having contractions. I just couldn't feel them. Like they put the monitor on you and they could see the contractions. They're like, you didn't feel that? I'm like, no, I don't understand doctors. Maybe it's the insurance nowadays. I don't know. But like I said, my child was breech. 
the water was gushing. Like I couldn't sit at home like that's disgusting. Like I'd be sitting on the toilet the whole time. And every time I had a contraction, even though I couldn't feel it, it like gushed more. Make sure that everything is okay. So we're gonna you, can, have you can get an infection. That's why. That's the hospital now. My mom's going to come get prints in a little bit. We'll Must be your dog. Where the day takes us. Hello, you guys. So it is now. Do we know what time it is? It's I love like that 12... sound. <laughs> I feel like it's such a time warp in here. Let me see. It's like 12, 1251 um, in the afternoon. I am feeling good. I got Steven here with me. What's up, guys? They let her we eat? Just got some food in. Holy um, shit. Trying to... They let her eat. Oh, my God. <laughs> so when I went in for when my water broke, it was like 6 p.m. They got on my shit for having lunch at noon. And I'm like, I didn't know I was going to end up in the hospital. I did not know he was breech. And I certainly did not know I was going to have to have a C-section. They're giving her food. To eat before like contractions and stuff will like get worse. Um, Cause I haven't eaten since yesterday, like dinner yesterday. So I wanted to eat a little something. Cause I think once you're like, you know, really in like active labor, they're not gonna let you eat obviously. Um, I feel good. Obviously, when the contractions come, they hurt. Right now, it's manageable. I'm okay. Um, I haven't gotten any pain medication or anything. So, by the way, um, the the reason why, I mean, most C-sections are done with an epidural, but, um, or not an epidural, spinal block, but sometimes they have to put you out unexpectedly. That's why they don't want you anything in your system. So, this is shocking. But I will when I, I need it. Um... And we're kind of just waiting right now to see what happens um, and how we progress. So, yeah, it's just kind of like a hurry up and wait. That's what the nurse said. And I was like, oh, that's actually really smart. Um, so everything is going. They should be making her walk. Going good. I feel okay. And we're just hanging in there. We're a little tired because we didn't really sleep at all last night. So we've been trying to like doze on and off between like doctors and the nurses and stuff coming in. But... As of right now, we're just hanging out. I got like an egg kind of scramble thing. It actually looks really good. You had like Taylor ham egg and cheese? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can't clean. Oh, there's, there's a hot like, tub. Really, like, there's a tub and everything in here. I'm like, wow. wow. No work for Steven to Water sleep. Birth. I feel bad. He just has this chair. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> I thought there was going to be like a bed or something, but we're Different managing. It reclines pretty, pretty flat. Yeah. I just got some yeah, waters. it probably reclines into a bed. Ooh, it's applesauce. not comfortable. Love that. Literally the least flattering angle possible, but this is what we're working with right now with the camera. Yeah, it's fine. Let's see how hospital food is. I've never had it in my, my life. Sandwich was not bad. Yeah, Stephen already ate his sandwich. His, his came first. <laughs> I was like, I'm just okay, shocked. Yeah, I'm like fucking stunned. I'm I've never been a patient in a hospital before, or like stayed in a hospital, so. Cheers. And that was another reason they said before your water breaks and if you're starting to have a contraction, stay at home as long as possible. Because, you know, you can eat. You're not supposed to eat because, like I said, the whole C-section thing. But, wow, things have changed in 25 years, 24 years, 23 years. I don't know. What year is this? Oh, it's good. I literally just got, like, eggs with cheese, pepper, and, like, some bacon. Like, a little omelet. Pretty dang good, if you ask me. As the last meal, I guess. <laughs> last meal before baby. So I probably won't eat again after this. You think? Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tell because we don't know like how fast this is going to progress. I can't, I can't I believe it. It's pretty loud. She could have to go into a C-section at any moment. I'm not a doctor, but that's what I've been taught. But they're tracking like his heart rate. I think my heart rate and then my contractions like on this machine yeah. here. So they're tracking the contractions for now, seeing how dilated I get and like see because it's not progressing like super fast, obviously. I wonder I how far she is. Before my water broke. So right now it's kind of just a waiting game. But yeah, we'll keep you guys updated. Hey everybody, just checking in. Hello. Oh my god, this angle is like, oh my god. Why are they letting her? You guys. I'm at nine centimeters dilated now, so we're just trying to. Uh, what? Contour? She put contour on? This one's going to be more insufferable than Alex, maybe. What the fuck is that on her face? Why? I would want a clean, squeaky clean face. Okay, I put my hair into French braids with the with Andrew because I just didn't want to even think about my hair. This is so weird.
to get me to 10 centimeters because baby boy, my water broke, but he doesn't really want to come out. So they've been using um, Pitocin, which has helped to kind of speed things up a little bit. But I've Yeah, that, that's why she's going to have a C-section. That Pitocin fucked you up. Been having that for about 24 hours now. Um, but we made it to nine centimeters dilated. You have to be 10 to start pushing. So I should start pushing hopefully soon. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm those are the pain, fingers. So I, I think it's like five fingers. Anything more. I just am tired. I feel like because my body's going through a lot, but I can't really feel it. So I'm just trying to like wake myself up and get energized. Um, no, to be able to, you know, push because I think the last sleep was like 24 hours ago. Yeah, rest I'm a over that now. At this rest. Point. Yeah. And I can't really drink water either my mouth no. is so ice chips thirsty dry yeah it's just like you feel so thirsty but i'm not dehydrated because they pump you with fluids yeah. like the whole time so i know i'm not actually dehydrated your mouth is just so dry but i took like a big gulp of water before and it came flying back out so we're not doing that again um but yeah wish me luck next time i see you guys i will hopefully have a little baby ah! So good. She had her baby nine hours later. So that's nice. Nine, August 5th. Um, Carter Christopher arrived. I like that. I like that name. I'm not going to let him go, but I want you guys to see if you can see a little bit. Oh. oh, yes. Oh, my God. I'm going to, like, tear up. Yes. This. This is the moment. Oh my God. I can't help it guys. I know it's like a long time ago, but this right there, that is the moment. And that's how I look too, because I had to have a C-section. You see the thing in front of her. Then they take the baby right away. <laughs> I wonder what his weight was. Hey guys, how are you? Oh my goodness. I oh, she's wearing the shirt that Alex bought. I feel like I have not talked to you guys in a billion days. And like the last time I talked to you, everything was so different. Um, it is probably like four days since I've spoken to you guys. Um, we're still at the hospital, yeah, but I'm pretty section. sure we are leaving today, mm -hmm. which I'm so excited for. We're so excited to be able to go home um, and just like be in our own environment. We have I think I was there for four days technically with my older son because he was born at like 11 or 10.59 p.m. He was born pretty late really vlog the last couple of days because they have been so hectic. Um, I am going to sit down and do like a birth story. It was hectic. Story and explain to you guys everything that kind of went on because the actual labor and delivery process was so different than what I had anticipated or like thought that it was going to be. Um, obviously I'm a first time mom, so I don't know what to expect. Um, and it did certainly not go to plan, but the only important thing is that my son is here. He's healthy. He's coming home. A hundred percent. With us today. Um, he's perfect in every single way. And that's all that I could ask for. So I'm so excited and just can't wait to be able to bring him home with Stephen and get him to meet Princey and like everything. We just can't wait. Um, but he's perfect. Good. Everything is good. Good. The, um, delivery was definitely really crazy, which again, I feel like once I get hectic. home and can like collect my thoughts, I will talk to you guys and let you know for those that are interested basically what happened. But the end result is what we wanted, yes, of course, which exactly. is a baby boy, which 100%. is hundred percent. So we're going to get ready. I'm just getting together my stuff. Um, I'm a sucker for this I shit. Sorry, guys. Literally the first time. I can't wait to shower though once yeah. we're home, you know, because it's not the same as like in this hospital bathroom, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, you probably feel gross. So I will see you guys in a little bit. Oh, but she showed him. Eh, kind of. Who's that? Who is that? Oh I'm going to like cry. Who is that? Oh, show, show. Who is it? Is it your brother? I've been telling you you're going to oh. get a brother. I've been telling you. <gasps> Put the baby up. Oh, the doggo. Okay. Oh. okay. Hello, sniff. you guys. Oh, my goodness. I feel like I haven't talked to you. What is that? In a while. We have been so I don't know this lady, so I guess that's her makeup. Home from the hostel for about a week now. Oh, um, good. Also, I dyed my hair darker this morning. What do we think? I have to see it like once I do my makeup. Um, I was just sick and tired of like my roots growing in, so I kind of like brought my roots down. 
and made it a bit darker. Like it came out darker than I like even thought it was going to, but I'm kind of vibing with it. I have to see. Again, once like my makeup and everything is all done, oh, but that's when my hair might look a little different ridiculous. to y'all. But I wanted to tell you guys my birth story. Um, so okay. I wanted to wait a little bit because I'm sure you guys saw if you watched the rest of the vlog, which I'm assuming you have if you've gotten to this point. Um, we kind of stopped vlogging like after the first like... Yeah. I don't know, maybe day and a half. No, I don't blame her. Um, because everything was like going fine until it wasn't. And yeah. then for lack of a better term, like all hell broke loose. Literally oh, yeah. every single thing that could have went wrong did go wrong. Oh. Nothing went to plan. Uh, That's not, that listen, couldn't be true. I don't want to scare anybody. I'm here, I'm healthy, I'm fine. My son is perfect. Everybody is okay. So in the end, ultimately, that's all that matters. Um, but definitely things got a little crazy. And so I feel like I owe you guys like an explanation of, you know, the birth story. and what Well, you don't owe us anything. But, I mean, well, maybe she does owe us any. I don't know. It all happened. And I'm just going to do my makeup and get ready with y'all. Dad is downstairs with Carter, hanging out. So mom gets a little time to do her makeup and talk with her friends. But honestly, the first do week has job. been absolutely amazing. Like, I could not ask for a better baby. I feel like he's so good. And we've just transitioned so well. Like, now that we're home, I feel so much better. But I'm just going to start from the very beginning with the birth. Um, so basically, Carter's due date, which if you didn't see it, like I announced his name on Instagram and then I put it also, um, you know, earlier in this vlog, but we named him Carter Christopher. Mm -hmm. um, my dad's name is Christopher, so that's his middle name after my dad. Um, and we did Carter for his first name. We just really loved that name. So that's my son's name, but his due date was Monday, August 5th. But mm -hmm. I thought for sure that he was going to be late because people always say like with your first baby, they're always going to yeah. be late. Like you're going to go 41 weeks. You're going to need to get induced, like all this stuff. So due date. actually I had an induction date set already for when I was like 41 mm -hmm. and a half weeks. We had to set it up like with the hospital because my OB recommended that because mm -hmm. they said also typically first time pregnancies, first time moms, whatever, end up going late. So on the Saturday before his due date, um, my water ended up breaking, but at first I didn't realize that my water was breaking. Um, I was literally in Target, <laughs> walking around in Target like I always do. I'm like of all places for this to happen, it's kind of funny that it was there. And I was in there because like the due date was approaching. So I was getting like some little diapers and stuff, like some last minute things that I wanted to have at the house. But like, I literally thought that I peed myself and I was kind of like, wait, what's going on? And like ran to the front of the store because I was all the way in the back of the store and in the front of the store is where the restrooms were. And I was kind of like, okay, I don't know what's happening. Did so you, at first I was kind of like, I'm not sure. Were you wearing pads? Okay, just wear pads <laughs> or at least really strong liners. <laughs> Or if my water broke, but something's going on, so I'm gonna go home. Uh, so we get in the car, we go home, and then a couple hours later at home was like, you know, how you see it in the movies, and I was like, okay, this is definitely my water breaking. And my doctor had told me previously, call us if your water breaks, or call us when your contractions are five minutes apart. Right. Um, so for me, I did not have any signs of labor whatsoever at all. No contractions, at least nothing of note. That but you could since feel. since my water definitely did break, I gave the doctor's office a call and I was like, hey, listen, like my water broke, but I don't have any contractions or anything else. So like, I'm not going to come to the hospital right now because I didn't want to be at the hospital for like a super extended long no. period of time if I didn't have to. Like my plan was to hopefully be able to labor at home for a bit and then head to the hospital once I was getting like more dilated and more okay. pain and all that kind of stuff. And okay. so I called okay. my doctor and I said this and they were kind of like, like, listen, like the max we can give you is six hours, which right. I didn't realize. Uh -huh. So they were probably telling her you need to come in because like I said, I was told when your water breaks, you, that, but you call the doctor and you go in. You just, you know, you tell them you don't have to like break the, you don't have to do Indy 500, but you go to the hospital. So I bet you they said, yeah, come in. And she's like, well, I'd rather labor at home. They're like, all right, you got six hours. Basically, like once your water breaks, you're at a heightened risk for infection. Yeah. Oh, so the yeah. maximum that you can wait to come to the hospital is six hours. But I if would, you want to wait six hours, fuck me, so I wouldn't want to wait six hours. Hell, I, risk? No, we we decrease risk as much as possible. Contractions progress at home. Do that, but we need to see you within the next six. So I was kind of like, okay. At this point, it was really late at night. Um, like 11 p.m. So they told me like try and get some sleep. I obviously did not sleep at all, but we kind of waited it out at home. I was able to at least sit in my own bed, whatever. The six hours came, we headed to- the Your water was able to drip in your own bed. Got it. The hospital, even though I still was not having significant contractions, which you guys saw earlier in the vlog. When I got to the hospital, I was at about three centimeters dilated. And so I actually thought they were gonna send me home. Like that's what I was hoping. And they were like, no, you can't go home. Like you have to stay. Not your when your water water's broke, broke. Like, no. Right. So I'm admitted to the hospital, three centimeters dilated. Um, they won't let me go home. And basically, why I would to you, get 10 centimeters dilated. Why would you want to fucking go home? Why? That doesn't make any sense. What? Why? Did you want a home birth? Dilated to like, you know, 
push I don't know out, so. so I'm weird I'm like very I want to like I'm very un I don't like to take risks with health so that's just me I mean you do you guys I know there's a lot of people who love home births and you know midwives and stuff at least for me I was also high risk because I was so um obese but I don't risk anything give me the best of the best <laughs> oh, I knew that it was going to be a while. I'd rather have more medical treatment than not enough medical treatment, if you know what I mean. But they pretty much immediately wanted to start me on Pitocin, which is yeah. basically an Because induction. it's dangerous, um, you dumbass. This was something that I did not want to do if I didn't have to, because I had heard really bad things yeah. about like Pitocin it's and gonna being cause in general, just that it makes your contractions a whole lot more painful because it's basically like forcing you to go into labor instead of your body naturally doing well, it. Well, because your fucking water broke, you ass. It. Um, it's like a medication they give you and apparently makes the contractions a lot worse and more painful whatever so I was kind of like listen can we like give me like an hour or two and let's see if my body naturally progresses without having to like induce me she thinks she knows more than the medical team I bet you Alex 100% does this um, and they were like, okay, like, we'll give you like two hours and that's it basically. Like I'm like bartering <laughs> with the doctor. That's stupid. But she was like, okay, let's see if you naturally will progress. Cause I literally just got to the hospital. So two hours go by. I think I progressed a little bit, but I was still at only like four centimeters dilated. So the doctor was like, listen, we're going to have to start. How did you know how dilate? Wait a minute. Did she say at home she was four centimeters? I'm lost. If she said she was four, cell four centimeters at home. I don't know how they did that unless her husband got in there. Pitocin and start the induction. <coughs> Lord so knows I, like, I wouldn't okay, let my husband do that. I want to make sure there was no risk to my son. I wanted him to be yeah. safe. So I didn't care if I had to go through like extra pain to get him out. I was like, yeah. whatever, okay, let's go. Let's do it. Uh -huh. So she starts the Pitocin. Um, they start you off on like the smallest dose. And then gradually throughout the day, they'll start increasing it, increasing it, increasing it. Yeah. So the induction took a very long time. Again, I didn't know what to expect. Like I didn't know if I was just going to progress like 10 centimeters dilated and have these crazy contractions within like an hour or it was going to take a longer time. I guess everybody's different in how they respond to the medication. But but it pretty much was going on all day long. So at this point, I think though, like, cause the walking thing, I don't think they let you walk once your water broke though. Just kind of thought crossed over my head. I had been in the hospital for 24 hours and I had reached, I believe eight or nine centimeters dilated at this point, um, which again, you have to get to 10 to start pushing. So I was getting very close to um, you know, actually pushing in labor. Um, so I had already had the epidural at this point. I really was not in significant pain, which at the Yeah, and any moment when they see the babies starting to, um, you know, have signs of distress, that's, that's it. C-section done. This one, I was still vlogging with you guys and stuff. And I'm mentally trying to pair myself, you know, to get ready to start pushing, give birth, whatever. And a doctor comes into my room and is like, we're going to have to stop your induction. And I was like, what like at first i thought i was like am i like dreaming because again it's like the middle of the night i'm like so groggy and i was like wait what do you what do you like what do you mean and he was basically like there are too many emergency labors going on right now and i guess they didn't have enough doctors to deliver the babies they're like we need to stop anybody that's on like a high risk medication or whatever which pitocin is considered i guess um, you know, because they couldn't have me go into labor and then not have a doctor to deliver the baby basically so as i'm like about to <laughs> hopefully get to the point where She's having this discussion, I hope, with her doctor. Okay. I'm going to start pushing. They have to stop the induction. Um, so that was definitely something that I didn't expect. And definitely probably not something that's very normal, but I guess... No. You, know, you can't go into labor if nobody can deliver your child. Uh, so. It doesn't work like that. Uh, uh, she's lucky everything turned out. Okay, let's just leave it at that. Thank God. I've yeah, never heard that of that. happened. Um, I was kind of just like, there's no, you don't get a choice in that. Like, they're kind of just like, we're telling you that we're stopping the induction. But her water broke. You don't have that. So I'm like, okay. Um, they stopped Listen, the induction. Listen, the doctors, they know what really they're know doing. I don't really know how many hours went by. I want to say it was maybe five or six. But at this point, like my judge of time and everything was difficult but mm -hmm. this was like in the middle of the night and we didn't restart the induction till the next morning so it was quite a okay. few hours that went by until they restarted 
the induction. So they start giving me the Pitocin again now for a second time. And basically at that point, this was pretty much the point when we stopped vlogging because this was when everything pretty much became bad. Um, I don't know if it was stopping the induction and then restarting the yeah. induction, if it was a combination of just now at this point, I had had the epidural for so long, but the next day when they had restarted the Pitocin, um, I was in way more pain than I was in the day before. The upper part of my stomach was like no longer numb like at all and I could completely feel like everything going on up there. Okay. And was in a lot of pain. Um, uh -huh. And as well as in my back was in a ton of pain. Uh -huh. I'm pretty back sure I was labor. in back labor, like uh -huh. his face. I don't know if you want them to be face down or face up, but he was like the opposite basically of yeah. what you want. Like his head was down, but his face was in the wrong position which makes you go into back labor, which is a bit they more painful, I guess. I don't know, but I was moment. in a lot of pain during the second induction. Like the epidural was not working in the way it was the day before. And they had asked me like if I wanted the anesthesiologist to come back in and like basically, I guess, redo the epidural or give more of the medicine, I guess, to me or whatever. But at this point, like I just wanted to focus on getting the baby out. I was like, I don't even care. Let's just get this baby out of here. So we didn't do that because I didn't want anything to like, again, prolong this process. Okay. Yeah. Um, cause it had already been so long. So again, this goes on for like an entire day. I'm in a lot of pain. And now at this point I had been in the hospital for about 48 hours. Um, and I had gotten to nine and a half centimeters dilated. There was like one part, I guess, of like my cervix, I think that was like not moving over yeah. or whatever, like that was stopping me from getting to that 10 centimeters dilated. And I was at nine and a half centimeters dilated for a couple of hours. And at this point, my body was pushing um, which I wasn't even trying to do it my body was just naturally doing it like trying to push this baby no out. shit I was actively not trying to like push and my body was literally like just like convulsing into yeah. the push uh -huh. it was a very weird like experience but like I couldn't stop that and the nurse did say that that's like relatively normal I guess relatively speaking with like everything else that kind of had been going on so at this point the doctor came in and this wasn't even like my normal doctor it was a doctor I had never met before she was a very nice lady but she was basically like we're going to need to do a c-section because it's been over 48 hours since your water broke yeah this baby is not coming out and yeah. we're gonna need to do a c-section to yeah. get him out and i was like oh my yep. goodness mm -hmm. um because again now i had been in regular labor for like 48 hours I'm yeah i'm surprised so i would have been but when this is done i gotta google this because i would have been like okay my water broke like i don't know again i'm a researcher i'm not trying to say and she seems like she knows more than the doctors, but I wonder if they were talking C-section a lot earlier than that. I, I've just 48 hours. Oh my, I got to look. Hold on. Okay, so I'm not going to switch the screen. I have Google up. This is pregnancybirthbaby.org.au, which I think is Australia. And it says around seven in every 10 people give birth within 24 hours of their waters breaking and almost all nine in 10 people within 48 hours. If your waters break after 36 weeks pregnant and labor doesn't start within 24 hours, your health team may discuss inducing labor to due to the risk of an infection. I would, all right, so within 48 hours, okay. Okay, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe it was because he was breech. I don't know. I don't know. That just wasn't my experience. So tired. I have not eaten. I have not slept in literally days. And okay. now I'm getting a C-section. And I know, yeah. like everyone always says, like C-sections, the recovery is a lot worse than a regular delivery. And I yeah. had never thought that I was going to have to have a C-section. Because yeah, again, a lot no. of times if you get a C-section, you know it beforehand because your child may no. breach. Like it, it's called, no, you dumbass. It's an emergency C-section. Yeah. Which means they're head isn't down or there's a reason yeah. why and you would have scheduled it beforehand no well no so baby can move around just because head's not down at a certain time unless like you're starting to show signs of labor like you're starting to have contractions i mean again i'm not a doctor i just remember from so maybe she's right okay i just doesn't ooh. And known, hey, I'm going in on this date at this time to get a C-section. And if I had to do that, I feel like I would have felt better about it. I would yeah. have had more time to like research it and stuff. Yeah. But because he was head... Well, she should have researched it to begin with. You Down and everything pointed to being able to have a regular delivery. I had no real knowledge of like a C-section or anything like that because I hadn't looked it up. But at this point, she's like, we have to do a C-section because we got to get him out. And so I... She didn't look it up. Obviously, my only concern was making sure that my son was safe. Yeah. And came out when he needed to. So Obviously. I was just like, okay.
you know, I'm not gonna be like, no, like, let me wait a little bit longer. Like, my only concern at that point was my son and making sure that, you know, everything was okay. I don't know. I would have been pushing for that long before that. I, I don't know. I... Okay with him. So after that, everything, everything happened super fast. And mm -hmm. then once I actually started the C-section, I literally want to say it took like 15 minutes. It was a very, mm -hmm. very fast. I didn't feel anything um, during the C-section, which was- Because you had a spinal block? was very good because I was in so much pain before and then I guess whatever they give you for the c-section it's a spinal block and you can't feel anything they're cutting into your fucking stomach dumbass made that pain go away too and I just didn't like have She's any flaky. feeling basically in the lower part of my body but you yeah. are weak during it but I was well, so like so and she's lucky because I've heard of people too that something happens and then boom they have to put them out which is why you're not supposed to eat like, out of it I just feel like I had been through so much in the past two yeah. days or so that it was just like a very like out of body experience almost. Um, but the only thing that I heard them say during the C-section was, oh my God, we're gonna have to make this incision bigger. This is a big baby. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Um, Cause I never had a growth scan throughout my pregnancy. I know that's th like a thing that other people do. I had asked my doctor about it and they were like, we don't really do that unless there's a reason um, for us to like want you to do that because I guess a lot of times it's not really accurate Insurance. So I had no idea like what size my son was like I never got any sort of indication um, And he ended up wait I never got a growth scan But they could tell me pretty much by the size of my stomach and how I progressed or not stomach You know what I mean being nine pounds and two ounces and 21.25 inches So yeah, my well Andrew was like nine nine sixteen. No nine and a half I think. He's super long it and super big um, for a baby. He's like in the 96th, 97th percentile or something like that. Yeah, did your newborn clothes not fit him? Which I did not know. I thought actually he was going to be on the smaller side because I didn't really get like a larger bump till the very end of my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So I was very surprised to hear that, which is probably part of the reason why he didn't want to come out. But also after I... Well, your muscles start to relax your abs. Probably what was holding your... Um, belly back from really expanding until it had no choice but to let up had the c-section the doctor spoke to me and basically said that he was never going to come out naturally because of the way mm -hmm. that he was positioned yeah she's lucky if she was in medieval times, she would have been dead so was the baby um i guess he wasn't like going through straight or something like that like mm -hmm. so i was going to have to have a c-section regardless so in the end i was going to end up with a c-section mm -hmm. anyways it just would have been so that was dumb. They didn't know that until fucking 48 hours after. I'd be pissed. A little bit better if I didn't go through the two days prior that. What, is she going to fix her face? Because her face so, is bugging me. Do the C-section. Um, Why is her face that color? My son comes out. He's perfect. He's healthy. Good. Um, everything, which was great. Best day of my Why life. Why does she I keep so doing that? I was so relieved, so happy that just like he was okay. He finally came out. Um, you know, everything like that. They sew me back up. We move up to, you know, the mother baby kind of part of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And we had a great first night, actually. He was born at night, like 9 p.m. So mm -hmm. maybe after, you know. Yeah, and it's kind of good because you can finally now sort of be more comfortable. I mean, you're still on a lot of pain meds after a C-section, so. Trying to come out for that long, like he was tired because he actually slept like the first night. I was like, mm -hmm. wait, I thought babies don't sleep. Like it was, we all were able to get some sleep, so I cannot complain. Um, you know, we have. Newborn sleep, yes. Okay. Got a great first they do I mostly still have sleep. like a lot of the medication and stuff in me, so I don't feel any pain or anything mm -hmm. at this point. You probably um, felt fantastic. I'm good. Now, the next day rolls around, still feeling okay. Um, our families came, they got to meet him and stuff like that. I was feeling like a little bit sore, but I was all right. It was on the second day after um, the C section when I really was like, ooh, wow, like I'm actually like in a lot of pain. Now, I've spoken to other people who have gotten C sections, and I think every hospital may do this a little bit differently, but your hospital sucked. The one that I went to does not actually give you like pain medication. I think if I would have like pressed for it, they would have given it to me. If I would have asked for like some sort of like. What, is she like at the world's most barbaric hospital? Like, I'm not, you're not gonna, I mean, generally, unless you have a problem. There are people with problems. I know. There's people with that become addicted easily. You only really need the pain meds for a couple days. That's all. Like significant medication for the pain, um, but they just gave Tylenol and Advil to me. What? Where? What the fuck hospital was she at? I would be. Are you kidding? After a C-section, 
on day motherfucking two, Tylenol. I would tell them to shove the Tylenol up their ass. Give me morphine, bitch. Like, lay on the Percocets. Are you kidding? What the fuck hospital is this? Manage the pain, and I was definitely... She's lucky. She's lucky everything turned out. In a lot of pain. Um, And I don't want to scare anybody by this, because now that I've been home for a week, I feel a world's better. But I was not prepared for... So, yes, when you go home, you start taking Tylenol and Advil till the pain goes away. Yeah, and it wasn't that bad of a recuperation. You're just very limited on what you could do. You can't lift anything heavier than the baby. It's kind of nice. Everybody helps out. Last thing you want to do is like sweep or anything that's like loading the dishwasher. Um, You can't do any of that, but... The Tylenol when you get home, yes. But in the hospital, put the morphine on me, baby. Or um, like C-section recovery. Again, maybe had I known I was having a C-section. Actually, now that I think about it, that's when I realized that morphine makes my face itch. Um, Because, yeah, after I had the C-section, they did give me morphine and my face like totally broke out and it was itchy and I had to get Benadryl and it was just a whole deal. But Tylenol on day two? section and I was able to do more research it would have been different but I was not prepared for um like the toll that it was going to take on my body and I think it I hope Alexandra's watching this and she does some motherfucking research it was a mix too of not only the c-section but also the really long labor that I had before that like my body just kind of went through it so I was definitely in a lot of pain like it, like I could barely get out of bed by myself which was very scary yeah, I've never had any sort of like c-section. surgery or anything before yep. so it was just not something that I expected. But the reason why I wanted to even talk about this is to anybody that may end up having to go through a similar si- situation, Alex, I whether hope you you're know watching. you're going to have a C-section or not. Because at first I was like, am I ever going to get better? Like, this is really yeah, bad, you but will. you really, really will. So I want to like give that. I don't see why that's just barbaric. Like that is barbaric. And they stole the joy that she should have had day two after her C-section. They, they stole it from her silver lining truly like those first few days were were pretty bad but i really feel a world's better now of course it's gonna take time like i think typically it's like six weeks weeks or so for like a full recovery but after that first week you really will feel better so i want to like say that for anybody who also is maybe gonna end up having a c-section don't let that first couple days scare you because i certainly was very scared and was like whoa what is happening because it's like you just had a major surgery yeah your body is in a lot of pain but you also have a little baby that you want so badly to like take care but I was- you've just been cut from seam to seam there well they they and they didn't give i i'm like again mama goob is without words i would have mm, she's mm, no medicine what the fuck is wrong with you guys oh we don't want to get her addicted well that's pain meds are for people in fucking pain you ass it's not like 20 weeks later she's still looking for percocet what the actual fuck? And I bet you this hospital too, like, probably refused to give the baby formula if he needed. It's probably one of those hospitals. Um, because when I, like, again, when I had the baby, um, especially with Andrew, they gave me the morphine, even though it made my face all blotchy, but they pre-medded me with Benadryl. And I didn't produce any milk at first, and um, which I guess is normal with the pain meds. And it's probably why they don't want to give it to her. I don't fucking care. Formula. All right. So Andrew wanted, you know, to eat. He was a big baby. So they, they gave him formula, you know, because you feed your fucking baby. So I bet you a dollar to a donut. That's why they didn't want to give her pain meds. And it does. It's not good for breastfeeding, but... They stole her joy. This is the year 2024, okay? Just whatever. Oh my God. I was like, I can't even get out of this bed. Like they had him in like a yeah. bassinet yeah. in our room and I couldn't even no. pick him up out of the bassinet. You can't, like that's nope. how bad the pain yep. was. And so that mentally was just really hard. Like I didn't even care about the physical pain, but I'm like, I want to hold my son and not yeah. be in pain, you know? They, they stole your joy, yes. Um, but thankfully, again, like I said, it's a very short lived sort of thing and you're going to get better. So I don't want to scare yeah. anybody. I just want to give, you like, will. I wanted to give like a more realistic account. Cause I feel like if- yeah, go to a hospital that gives you fucking medicine. I'm sorry. Somebody would have told me like, listen, these first couple of days are going to be bad, but then all of a sudden you're really going to start to feel better. Cause that really is truly how it yeah, happened for me. That's how I normally it comes in the beginning. So that's what I want to relay. I mean, they cut through your skin, your fat, your muscle. That's major surgery.
to you guys that it's gonna be okay. Yeah. Um, and of course. yeah, so that all happened. We had to stay at the hospital for a couple days, I guess, just because yeah. when you have a C section, they do make you stay for a little yeah. bit longer. Um, it's major surgery. But once we were finally able to go home, it got a lot better. I started to feel a lot better. Of course. And we have just been adjusting really, really Take nicely. A nice shower. It's just been like the best time. Like oh, I just yes. love it mm -hmm. so much. And so far, I really, really love being- This is the high. Yes, you're on a high a couple weeks, maybe two. Then it's going to set in, baby girl. So don't get all that excited yet. The dog days of newborn life are coming. Mom and um, I was nervous because I've never spent a lot of time around- children like not nervous that i wouldn't like being a mom but just nervous that i wouldn't know what yes. to do like you're gonna break I'm an it only child, yes an only child, i'm like I'm, I'm like you're gonna let me take him home because i had never dealt with babies either so yeah i have spent a lot of time around babies or children but i'm not um, prepared but you just like get because this the labor and delivery nurses when they're changing your baby they're like whoosh, whoosh, whipping him around they're like don't worry the baby can he's okay he's not you know like he's not gonna break and you just know what to do i don't know how else to describe it and a lot of you guys told me that too but it really is like a natural thing and so yeah i kind of just wanted to like tell airhead. the story a lot went wrong during my birth like it certainly was not the birth that i anticipated or had imagined or planned for but in the end it doesn't matter because like i'm yes, healthy and true. safe my son is healthy and safe 100%. and everything is okay thank god and but things might not have happened like that so she should be thanking god or whatever she believes in and even so, if it's not this perfect birth where, you know, you push for 10 minutes and your baby comes out perfect no, and this, everything is great, fake. like, it's going to be okay and everything's going to be fine. And, um, yeah, that's kind of, like, the message that I wanted to, like, portray. But that is my birth story. I feel like I blab. All right. I don't have much time, so I just want to take a quick peek and see if she has any comments that are worth it. Okay. Yeah, these are all just, com I mean, they're great comments, but um, I'm kind of running short on time today. All right, guys. Well, that was horrific. Um, I am very glad things turned out for the best. They might not have. There was a good chance that things were going to go really bad with her. So I'm glad everything worked out because there's nothing more that I want in this world to see people happy, healthy, with healthy babies. I would have done a little bit more research on that hospital because the whole <laughs> waiting 48 hours after your water breaks... Some of that might have been her. Um, and then just to do a fucking C-section. I, I don't know. I'm like without words. And then the no pain meds after. That just doesn't make any sense. But anyways, guys, uh, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I hope to catch you on the next one. Bye.